Confessions at the Altar is a conversation, a place of transparency, vulnerability, and growth where we can share about the struggles of being a millennial Christian. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So hi, everyone. Hope your day is going well. Welcome to Confessions at the Altar with Atissi Iris. Joining me today is a dear friend and a sister of mine, Crystal Mutoni, and she is the prayer leader at her at our youth church young adult ministry um, she she's a lover of God she's someone that I definitely I learned from you know I watch and observe you a lot <laughs> and she she's different she's truly different she to me she's the definition of a new creation which is our topic for today you look brand new <laughs> So um, before we go any further, I'm just going to start with like a short prayer and we're going to get into it. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to sit down, oh God, sit down with Christelle and to share, oh Lord. I pray that as we speak, your Holy Spirit would speak through us, oh Lord, that as we share, may the truth of who you are be revealed unto the hearers, oh Lord. May your Holy Spirit rest in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to start. I just want to know, um, I want to get like a back backdrop of who you are. Mm. You know, you're Christelle and Christelle. obviously, you're, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're Christelle and yeah. you're obviously a Christian, but like, were you always born into a Christian home? Um, I was born into a Christian home. My mother is Catholic though. So okay. I was, it was mostly we would were, we were go to Catholic church. Um, as far as I can remember, I was surrounded by faith, you know, faith. Okay. yeah. So I wasn't necessarily intimate with God. Mm -hmm. I wasn't fellowshipping with God. I didn't even know what that meant to be honest, <laughs> but I would always went to church. We always went to church on Sundays. My mom would wake me up on Saturday morning at 7 a.m. sometimes like <laughs> to go to mass. Um, but I did not necessarily understand, but I was just, I just knew that God was real. I knew mm -hmm. that there was a God. I did not have a personal relationship, but yes. obviously there was there was something. There was <laughs> someone out there who was like creating everything. Yeah. Um. So I would say, yeah, I did. I did grow up in a in a, in a Christian home, mm -hmm. and even my cousins they would take me to church sometimes with, with them. I like remember. Catholic church too, or a different church? a different church. Oh, okay. yeah. Like we would spend New Year's Eve there. Um. Like I remember sometimes they would, um, they would praying in the middle of the night and i'll just wake up and go and see what they're doing you know oh, wow. <laughs> so i was i was surrounded i would say i was surrounded but i did not necessarily have a relationship with god mm -hmm. it's just uh, i grew up in it um but i just didn't know what it was that's nice okay it's yeah. cool mm -hmm. so um one thing like that um i remember i don't know i think it was my birthday um mm -hmm. uh, was it my birthday Cause you brought me back. You know when we went to um, is it cacao or cocoa seventy? Yeah, I think you brought it, me. Was it you that brought me back home? Is it your birthday though? Yeah, when we went to um, I remember when we went. Yeah, tell me the story. Of <laughs> I think it was either. I think that was the day because we were talking about. Uh, I don't know what we we're talking about, but I just know like. I think I was like, oh, it was my birthday, like before I'd have gone out, you know, I'd have bought alcohol or the gun mm -hmm. party, and you were, and I was trying to sound righteous and be like. Oh my god, I can't believe what I was doing. Chris goes, please. <laughs> like it was fun. That's why we did it. And like I just sat there. The minute you said I was like, so what were you doing? <laughs> and then I saw that um video that you posted on um on IG of you like with the, with the was it Shisha? It was Shisha. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell me a bit about that? Like what happened? Like what was that life like for you? The if life you, before. Free, yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Um, I think honestly, there's power. I realized when I posted that video that there's power in testimony. Mm -hmm. Like when you show yourself, like people who you used to be and who you are now, because yeah. you are a different person when you get to know God in, on an intimate level. So I obviously like um, what life was like. So growing up, obviously, I knew I knew there was a God, but because I didn't have a personal relationship, I wasn't convicted of, of some of those things that I'll be convicted of now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I lived, so I, I came to Canada, um, like, my last year of high school, and so I 
I just wanted to leave that life that I was watching on TV. Like, yeah. like I felt like I was, uh, I was just free. I felt like I was coming into freedom uh, because my mom was back home. And so I felt like there was nobody looking at me or looking yeah. over me. So I just enjoyed, honestly, everything. Like, I enjoyed going out. I enjoyed drinking. I enjoyed, like, all of these things. Like, there's nothing... You, you, you could ask like what did you do but like what else what did I not do mm -hmm. <laughs> like so I, I think it was just I was young I was just looking to have fun and opportunities were there to have fun obviously I like the opportunities <laughs> opportunities they're always there they're always there oh, um, wow. even when you're not looking trust me they're always there so I I I, I, I enjoyed it mm -hmm. and by enjoying it though i think you get to a point where especially maybe because we're in ottawa it's a small city you go to the same places you see the same people sure. so uh, after a certain amount of time you kind of get bored and so i started kind of getting bored and not going out as much but at the same time i think what really transformed in my life is there sometimes um you can go through something and you try to fill a void right with the mm. drinking with the smoking with the people like you try to fill a void but you get to a point where you feel like that void is not being filled so mm. i think because of what i was going through at, at a certain time um i could not like the the, the fun yeah. part of life it was it was fun for the moment but the next day you get a hangover and you're like oh my god i don't want to go through this anymore <laughs> um so i i, I I, I, I enjoyed it. I don't regret it, to be honest. I actually yeah. do not. Sometimes I would say, <laughs> I, I used to think I, I regret it. Like, if I knew God earlier, yes, it would have probably been a better life. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I think I thank God for that because it gives me a new perspective. So when I started to get to know God a bit more on a personal level, it, it, it showed me what it feels like to live a life without god and to live a life with god mm. to have a life uh filled with people and 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 substance and to have a life filled with the holy spirit like it gives it gave me that thing that i can compare to like oh wow god i thank you for you took me through that and you protected me and now i'm here yeah. and i'm not perfect obviously like but no, no i i yeah nobody is and we're but I, I i can see that the progress and i cannot attribute it to of what i've done but simply to the holy spirit has a way of drawing you and mm -hmm. has a way of of making even like circumstances in your life uh in a way that will align you to his will so mm -hmm. i think i'm just a, a a product of the holy spirit just aligning things in my life hard times tough times to 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 get me to, to get to that place where I'm aware or I recognize that there's nothing else but God. Like, I have no one else to go to. I have nothing else but God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's, that was a lot. That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because I feel like I can relate, definitely relate to, you know, I came to Canada. I said I'm going to be a baby girl when I get here. Mm. I was ready to turn up, so I did that. Yeah. You know, I drank. Um, I smoked. I never thought I would smoke. I honestly, I used to say people who smoked were dumb because you know when you're high, you just, you just, you don't look like you make sense, you know. So I was like, nah. But because of somebody like I really wanted to get into his world and understand why he was smoking, so I tried it. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I tried it. I tried it a few times, but it was just not. It was not working for me. Um, but I know, like, I can honestly say I definitely enjoyed going. I did I enjoy partying. <laughs> No, because I had to be yeah. tipsy to party. Really? Yeah, I couldn't like I like I liked what my friend and I did. Like we would dance, and, like Friday night would bring up. Hey, mommy and daddy, for me. <laughs> if you're <laughs> this is the old one. Yeah. <laughs> we would buy like alcohol and like Friday night would have our own party at home and just dance by ourselves. So I enjoyed that, but going out not necessarily because it's like you're on high alert. You know, you don't want someone to attack you and like stuff be happening in clubs like. <sighs> but um, definitely like. It was an experience. Mm -hmm. um, you did say something. I just wanted to ask if it's okay because you were like that. You had, you were going through something and like those things were not feeling 
mm. a void for you are you okay sharing that with yeah. us um yeah so it got to a point in my life where um my sister passed away and so that for me it really broke me and it got me to a point actually <laughs> if i'm honest it got me to a point where i was like god you're not you may be real but you're not good mm. and so because of that i rejected anything good anything godly yeah. and like I, i'm i'm a i'm a respectful person by nature like i don't i don't wild out just like that just like that but i enjoy having fun so i found um refuge in those things yeah and i found refuge in um just feeling filling the void so that i don't feel hurt oh i don't feel like i miss her or yeah. i i was just filling my life with things like trying to get busy mm -hmm. just so that i don't have that time where i'm sitting alone and i'm like oh my god like this actually happened mm -hmm. and if for me um going through that it's i think for me that's what i i attribute like my the pivot in my life is i really attribute that to to, to that because it took me out of religion uh, before I was leaving out in religion, like I knew God, but I wasn't like walking, you know, in a yeah. godly way. I yeah. just knew God was good. Like I remember, I would go out, get home at like six or, or so, yeah. but I would want to go to church the next day <laughs> because <laughs> I felt like that was a way of redeeming myself. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. So that that's religion, really. Yeah, that's what I call religion. Is you just you just trying to do work works like, yeah you do you you mess up but you're like okay god like if i do this i'm gonna I'm finish finish god <laughs> exactly <laughs> you're finessing god um so so it took it, it took me from i'm not even trying anymore like i'm not trying to please you god anymore like i just mm. want to live my life i want to have fun i want to mm. do all that so even so that got me to a point where i'm not even forcing myself to go to church like i'm not even forcing myself to read the bible like i'm not doing none of that um so the the more i did i i guess um how can i say like the more i took time away from god <laughs> uh the more that void like that void was like mm -hmm. evident like it was yeah. so real um like i would wake up and i'll cry for no reason i'm like i, I don't think anything sad happened to and this is like years even after she passed away oh, okay. um and i'll wake up i'll cry and, and i'll realize like my school is not going well like my, I don't feel like I have a purpose. I don't feel like I'm going anywhere in my life. I just feel like I'm living the same day over and over again. Um, and so because of that, I I went from religion and I got to a point where I cried out to God. And I was like, God, you must be real. Like, I see you in other people's lives. Yeah. I know, like, you're real because I see the world. Like, there's no way this mm -hmm. is just out of, like, a big bang. Yeah. Um so I was like, God, I just want to know you. And I think that cry out of a desperate place, out of a depressed uh, state, mm -hmm. really allowed me to get to know God for myself and to experience God for myself, not through my mother or not through the church or that mm -hmm. feeling you get you know when you get to a place where there's a presence of god you get mm, a feeling yeah. but you go home you're like oh <laughs> this feeling did not come with me <laughs> so, yeah I, I think um it, it, it bursts something out of uh, it's, that's why i was saying like the holy spirit can just align things in your life whether it's good or bad but he will always align something that will draw you closer to him it may mm -hmm. not be in the way that you envisioned it mm -hmm. but it will always bring you to that place where you're broken and the only person you feel like can reach out to you is the god who made you and who created you yeah yeah wow, that's powerful oh wow i know like um let me see. I know there's a verse um, after, like, we had, like, our core um, Bible verse. Let me pull that up. should have had that ready. That's okay. <laughs> so it's, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But the thing that really like hits me, it's now all things are, are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ 
reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation yeah. i think one thing that really hits me like like in those verses it's like it's really it's not you it's not your efforts it's yeah. not your ability it's not your plan it's all god okay. like the whole transformation like it's it's really god because like like you said like going to church you party and then you go to church on sunday i did that you know i don't, I don't even heard of nepa yeah yeah I think- I think I went to one of those. Yeah. <laughs> that part was just, you know, it's a thing. It's like the, the Nigerian yeah. Association Party here in Canada. And it's always around my birthday, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, my birthday could be, it would be Nepa, my birthday church. <laughs> and then I remember one day, one weekend, what happened? I went to Nepa. Then I said, let me have my own house party. Okay. And then I went to church Good the shot. next day. And I'm there. <laughs> Holy Spirit is hitting me and all of that. I don't know what was hitting me, but I was, I was shot somewhere. And you think, like, you know, all of those things, like, fix and remedy the issue. No, because after that, I was still depressed. I was still crying in my house. But, like, sometimes, like, I can't even explain the process of how I got to where I am. It's been a lot of ups and downs. But, like, can you share with us, like, what you said that you, you had, like, you know, a day, like, you would wake up and you would just cry and then you finally cried out to God. What was that process like for you? Hmm, the process. Um, I think you would just wake up one day and you feel, I don't know, it still happens now, to be honest. Like, mm-hmm. it's not something that happened, like, years ago. Like, even this week, <laughs> I, can't, I cannot <laughs> lie. I was going to try to find an example, like, from way back then. But, like, even this week, like, we live in a world that's not perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And we live in a world that things can affect us. And, um whether we know it or we don't, when we, we're not able to guard ourselves or our hearts, like we can easily fall into that place of, of depression. Like, mm-hmm. like just last night, was it last night? Yeah, just last night. I was literally, I was, we, we had the midnight prayer. Yeah. And I was sitting, I'm like, God, I'm not feeling you lately. Like, I'm, mm. I don't feel, not that I want to feel God, but I don't, I don't feel that fellowship. Mm. Like, like God, what's going on? Like, what am I doing wrong? Mm. What? Like, you can easily get to that place, whether you know God or you don't know God. Like, you can get to a place where you, whenever, I think we we're made for fellowship. I believe a hundred percent that we were created. God created us for fellowship. He created us for communion. And so when we, when for some reason or another, whether it's sin or disobedience or you, you, or you're just too busy with life, you know, mm-hmm. um, we can get to that place where we don't feel that connection with God. Mm-hmm. Um, so the process, I think, of getting there is we, how can I say, we ignore the Holy, the voice of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and it gets to a point where he keeps silence. Mm-hmm. And when, when he does, uh, then we feel dead on the inside. Yeah. Uh, because he's the life he's mm-hmm. the life that's in us right mm-hmm. um he's the the spring of life so whenever you i personally i'm just talking about my life i don't know maybe you will share your process but for me i realized that i get to that place when i've been ignoring some of the things that the holy spirit of god has been talking to me about mm-hmm. um or i've i've just not been quieting myself to hear his voice mm-hmm. i get to that i can easily get to that place of depression of that place of you're you're just lost you, f- you feel like you're lost you don't yeah. you don't have you you like your hope um is like the light of hope is like extinguished like slowly yeah. by slowly like it just goes goes away um so the process i don't know i i, I maybe i'm i'm generalizing it but i think it's just simply God is there to guide us and God is there to give us directions. Sometimes directions can be just just wait, just stay and wait. Mm-hmm. And that and if you're not doing that and you get too busy trying to find the voice of God, you're going to feel dead on the inside. Mm-hmm. So me, that place of de- or like either like a depression, that place where you don't necessarily know what God is doing or you you feel lost is it's just because you have not for some reason or another um waited to hear god and so you got too busy Mm. yeah 
I don't think that that answers your question. I feel like I went a little bit over. <laughs> no, it's a really um, important answer, very valid. Um, I feel like what I'm getting, it's still the answer is still God. It's like like that um, transformation, like that, like being changed or like what do I want to say? I will use the word transformation. Transformation. <laughs> yeah, that like it can only come by actually like really being dependent on God. I know for, for someone like me, like I've been very up and down in my, in my walk with God, which honestly is kind of frustrating, but this year or from 2020, it seems very like it's different. You know, it's different. There's like a difference here because now it's like, you know what? I'm not going to fight with you any longer. Yeah. I'm just going to accept and like walk with you and just ex like accept whatever comes my way. But, um, with regards with like somebody who who like is struggling maybe they feel like they've been trying to do this walk but they don't feel new i know like that's something i felt at times like you know you it's like you're trying to live right but you just feel mm. you just feel off you feel yeah. like there's there's um there's something missing. You're like questioning, am I indeed new? Especially like for someone like I've struggled with lust, right? So like you could honestly stop having those lustful thoughts, you know, you rebuke and you condemn them as they try to come up as Satan tries to tempt you. But um, sometimes like, like these thoughts, it's like they just try to reinforce themselves in me. Like, no, you're not changed. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, have you dealt with something like that? Like, having to deal with like the reminders of your past trying to tell you that you're not this new creation like what was oh, yes. um yeah definitely and i think one thing that i learned from it is that it's it's we're progressing mm -hmm. you know we're not like when when we le read that scripture that you read earlier that we are made new in christ is we're given a new position mm -hmm. we're given a new inheritance that's how i understand it we're given a new inheritance in christ we're given a new measure of grace a new measure of mercy like there's mm -hmm. something that that it's like for example <laughs> you 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 go you go to school like you're given that ability to learn that mm. ability to progress from one year to another mm -hmm. like let's say you get admitted to university like it's just that admission like you have the right to go to school and to graduate and to become mm, that's good. whoever you want to yeah. become depending on what you're studying so i think it's it's when you, when that verse says we become a new creation that's how i envision it like we have like this open door uh and god gives us this inheritance like we have inheritance we have we are reconciled he talks about reconciliation right we are reconciled with god but i think once that happens then we we go through a process we mm -hmm. go through a walk like we're not made perfect right away mm. uh, but in god yes it's in christ we're made perfect but we're still living in our bodies so yeah. you you can receive christ today but tomorrow you're still gonna have those thoughts of lust because you're you're accustomed to that place you're mm. accustomed to that lifestyle um i hear some people who have like a one day like transformation like <laughs> like they like night and day I don't know, but I think for me, ooh, I just lost my ear. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not good. It's, okay. Okay. it's all right. It's real life, right? This happens in real life. Transparency, yo. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so I think for me personally, you, you, you have to accept that it's you you're being transformed mm -hmm. you're being transformed like so it's 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 continuous it present continue you're being transformed um so in in areas of my life where um i i cannot even tell you like the day i remember i was i was like hey night and day like i cannot like it was a process there's things that i, I you have to deal with things like there's mm -hmm. you just have to keep on renewing your mind and i think what helps I would want to talk about what helps you uh, to 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 continue to progress in that new life that you just received. I think it's surrounding yourself with the right people mm. because when I look back, that's honestly one thing that helped me is just that, like being around the right people, being around the people who are ahead of you. And so you keep looking at them, like, oh, I want to get there. Like, I I want to love God the way that you love God. I want to serve God the way that you serve God because. Once you encounter God and you get that experience, like a real encounter, um, 
he leaves an imprint on, in you he leaves a, a thirst in you but you have to water that like you have mm. to allow that to grow yeah. i heard somebody say once uh, like the that they say that we hunger the in the natural life we get hungry by uh by uh <laughs> let me let me rephrase. Yeah, in the nat in the natural, we get hungry if we don't eat. But in the things of God, we get hungry the more you, we eat. Yeah. Like so, the more you go to prayer, the more you read the word, the more you worship is the more you're going to want to do that. Mm -hmm. And the more you get into the presence of God, now He starts washing you. He starts renewing you. He starts taking away those thoughts. He starts like making you new. Like I remember. Um, I don't remember the exact moment where, like, hey, I feel like yo, today is the day where I got transformed. Mm. But I remember, like, looking back, and be like, oh my god, I can't believe mm. I don't think like that anymore. Mm. Like, I can't believe I'm not struggling with this anymore. Like, so there's no particular point in my own life. There was no particular point. I remember, yes, encounter, encounter yeah. of God, but um, it, it's a progress. I think we have to uh, 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 give grace to ourselves. Mm. We have to understand like this is a whole new territory this yeah. is a whole new lifestyle like this is new but we have a helper mm -hmm. and the holy spirit one thing that helped me is the moment I, I i guess i could say i started to yearn more they were teaching on the holy spirit so i got to know that in this life i have a helper when i feel like i can't make it when i feel like i'm not worth it when i feel like i i don't have what it takes uh, when I feel like I want to go back, I just call on the Holy Spirit. And, yo, he's the, he's the greatest person ever. Amen. You call on him, Amen. he's going to be right there. Yes. And he's going to help you to, you know, yeah. go through it. Amen. That's powerful. Wow. Yeah. I'm just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's so powerful. Wow. I think, like, it's really important to, like, stress that, is that this is a process. Like, it's... It doesn't happen. I know because I remember I heard that I was I watched um, a YouTube video and like in the comments, one girl was like, "Yeah, the Lord delivered me of lesbianism like in one night." And I just sat down like me that I've been struggling with <laughs> pornography and all of that. Why isn't that happening for me? Yeah. And you feel like there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just on your process. Because I think if you think about it, like you've be been committing this sin or living this lifestyle for like an extended period of time mm. this is learned behavior like it's a habit that you've developed and you've perfected yeah. it's not going to change overnight it's yeah. not you know like the desires don't just fall off mm -hmm. they don't just disappear like what happens is like you're literally giving grace but the most important thing is that you have to rely on god i know like one thing that i did that i made a mistake in is um and Holy Spirit reminded me of this like last week is that I would I got to those points where like you know you would pray and you get so charged up and you feel like I filled up my tank my tank is full I don't need to come back and pray again I'm ready powerful you know and then like you know a week will pass two weeks two weeks will pass and then things begin to happen and you're like what's going on and I won't lie like it made me realize the pride that I was because it is it's true when they said that humble people do pray like it made me realize the pride that I was carrying because I'm like ah, like I already spoke to you I spent this time with you why do you want me to keep, come back and keep spending time with you like it opened my eyes to like the pride that I had in my heart yeah. you can't the thing is with this walk you can't do it without God Hi, sorry about that, the battery died, but I was saying that, um, <laughs> I was saying that the Holy Spirit is our helper, so you just have to, like, trust Him through this walk, like, you don't have to do it on your own, you don't have to figure it out on your own, you know, He's there to guide you, um, I think it's very easy to get stuck on, like, uh, oh, you look at somebody else's walk, walk and how they've been walking and then you use that as a guide for you. Like, yes, you're trying to get there, but like that person also started from somewhere. So always yeah. keeping that in mind. Um, I was just wondering if there was anything else that we needed to to add on. Yeah, I, 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 I like what you just say there. The Holy Spirit honestly is our helper. Like, he's the one that we go to when we're feeling some type of way like if you could go to the holy spirit first and ask him be like holy spirit right now i am feeling weak right now i am i'm having thoughts right now i just want to you know just 
Um, it, it really would help. But one other thing I believe is we have to be intentional in our walk mm-hmm. too. Um, because you can say, Holy Spirit, help me. But if you don't really want to change, mm-hmm. that cry will be for, no, like, yeah. for nothing. Yeah. Um, so especially when it comes to uh, uh, dealing with sin or overcoming sin and overcoming temptations. Because the Bible says temptations will come. Yeah. Um, but we have to be intentional. So you ask the Holy Spirit. I use this example all the time. I'm like, God, help me to fast. But I really want to eat, right? <laughs> But I pray it just so I can give myself a pass and go eat. You know what I'm mean? I don't know if that ever happens to me. Mm-hmm. But sometimes like you can struggle with fasting or you can sh- like that's just an example of my life. That's something that recently happened. Like God, okay, today I'm gonna fast, please help me, give me the strength. But uh, but then I'm like I don't really mean it because yeah. if I really meant it I would I would really like whenever I would feel like okay like when you go grab some food, mm-hmm. I'll be like, Okay, Holy Spirit, like I'm feeling weak right now. Yeah. Please help me to to fast because <laughs> sometimes it comes easy sometimes it yeah. comes hard but um one thing I wanted to add there is that we have to be very intentional in our walk with with, with God in, in our desire to do what pleases Him and I think that comes from knowing Him I think sometimes you focus on getting over sin or overcoming sin but I believe that if you if you focus on getting to know God more if you focus on um getting intimate with God like even like you could you could yeah yeah you could mess up tomorrow and, or yeah like the last minute you've messed up but if your focus in is in, is in, is on getting to know God mm-hmm. the more you go into his presence the more you get to know him he transforms you yeah because transformation doesn't come from our works like mm-hmm. oh I'm gonna try today I'm just I'm not gonna look at nothing you say that the next second stress me, you're gonna fall <laughs> But the more you get into his presence, because he, he if you think about the story of Moses, he Moses was just living his life and then he comes around a, a, a burning bush mm-hmm. and then he's about to get closer and God was like, Remove your shoes for this is holy ground. Yeah. So so the more we want like when God's presence is there and he calls on us mm-hmm. and we, we try we're curious, we get to closer, he will help us to remove the things that, you know, are not holy in the standard of God so I believe that you you should be intentional but what you should really focus on more than anything more than overcoming sin because I believe the Holy Spirit the more you get to know the Holy Spirit you get to like what he likes you get to hate what he hates like you get to understand that obedience is really the engine that's going to push you so um, I just wanted to add that I think sometimes we get so overwhelmed with oh I want to overcome this sin like you want to put in all the effort and that's great the intentionality is amazing but if you get to know him trust me that sin will just walk away yeah. <laughs> it will just go you'll be like okay i can't i can't recognize you anymore because you look at like christ right now so you know you won't be as tempted uh that temptation will not be as strong so yeah, yeah. Oh, that's powerful um, definitely, like one thing I, I appreciate that you said is like intentionality. Like I know, uh, fasting for sure. <laughs> That's something I struggled with. Um, but when you actually like set your mind to do a thing, you will accomplish it. Like I, you know, like I don't know if you've heard that saying. If you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, you're going to succeed. I'm like, stop, please, true. <laughs> but it's the truth. <laughs> It's actually true, like, you know, you see people, like, in the world going out and doing great things. It's not because, like, they tap into their will. It's like, I want to do this thing. And if you're like, I want to actually live for God, you can want to live for God. The the temptations will still come, but, like, if you remember, there's something that people always say to me whenever I struggle with stuff or work is, you forgot your why. Mm. You know, you have to know why you're doing this. Like, why are you choosing to not commit the sin because I want to live a life that's you know pleasing to God because I want to honor God like because I don't want you have to remember like why why you're doing this mm-hmm. you know when you have that why in the back of your mind like it's easy to commit to the path um and also it says that um in Philippians two thirteen for it is God who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure but like that's only possible when you yield 
when you decide to know him, when you have that relationship with him, like you be like you said, you begin to see yourself changing, you know. Like I always I think back, honestly, I know I'm not where I'm meant to be, but I'm a different person. You know, I'm in a place where like I know when I was refusing healing, but now it's like, you know what, like it's like, yeah, I know I did that, and yeah, I know I messed up, but you know what, God, it's okay. Like you 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 really begin to see how God sees you. I feel like I'm going off a bit, but you really begin to see how God sees you. You just, you're precious. I want to say that. You are so precious to God. Like, whatever sin that you may have committed that just seems to be acting as a barrier between you and God, I want you to know that you're precious to Him. Like, He gave His Son for your sake. Mm-hmm. as well he gave his son for every like i think about that so much that jesus literally died for the same people that were crucifying him then in that moment like literally they could have crucified him he rose up and it's like you know what jesus i give my life to christ and that's like that's it so you are precious to him yeah. you're pre- you just just want him like mm-hmm. This walk, I know it, the reason why it seems so complicated is because we have all these other interests. Like, I feel like if it was in the garden and Satan was never there, like, we'd be living blessed, you know? <laughs> Life would have been sweet, but... So sweet. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, that's that's the card that we've been dealt with. So we have all these things that are contending for our attention. Mm-hmm. But if you just place your eyes on him, and even when your eyes come up, be humble enough. Yeah. To come back and say I'm sorry, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I want to say is that repentance. I feel like I'm just talking, but <laughs> but <laughs> repentance is very powerful. Yeah. Repentance is a powerful thing, you know. We see like in the Bible, we're like David and Saul. We always make the comparisons between the two of them. So, like, from my human understanding, he did not mess up as much as David did. Mm-hmm. But then David was the one after God's heart because David knew how to repent. Like, Saul, so you would tell Saul, so, Saul, so you did something wrong. And I didn't want the people to. Like, it's like his, he just had something to say. Saul could never understand that he had messed up. Saul could not see and recognize the fact that he had messed up. But if you can bring yourself to the point where I say, you know what, God? Yes, I've been committing this sin for so long. And if I'm being honest, I didn't want to stop it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like lustful thoughts or sexual act, all the things like I did not want to stop. But when you get to that point where you're honest and you're like, I actually don't want to do this any longer. Mm-hmm. That's where that transformation begins. Yeah. You have to want, like you have to mean what you're saying. You know, it says that God, man looks upon the appearance of a person, but God sees the heart of a person. So God can see you know, that thing you just say, you're lying. <laughs> you don't mean it. <laughs> he can see it. He can see the way you mean it, but he knows you're struggling. Mm. He can see all of that. So just, I don't know, man. Just my only thing I have to say is all that really matters is God. He's the one who reconciles us to himself. It's not our efforts. It's not by our power. You just have to want him. That's all. Desire. Want him. Mm-hmm. And he will work in you to will and to do so of his good pleasure. To will and to do. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that verse is my verse. I love it. He does a work in yeah. us to will and to do. Mm-hmm. He gives us the power to will, to, will, to want, to want it. You know, to want it, to desire it, and then to also perform it. Um, and you mentioned that that thing where they say you. you if you you want well, something in your life, you you'll be successful. Yeah. And it's so true. It's a principle, right? Mm-hmm. It's a principle in the world. It's a principle. Like if you want to succeed, you will succeed. Yeah. Um. But I think in the in the things of God, um, the reason why Jesus left and he's like, don't do anything unless I send the Holy Spirit to you, is because he understood like, yeah, you can will. I mean, Peter was a very selfless <laughs> <I know. laughs> <that's laughs> person. But you know, he waited, and then Jesus was was dead, and he's like, "Let me just go back fishing. <laughs> Let me go back to what I'm used yeah. to. Let me go back to what's normal to me." Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, Jesus came, and, and obviously he talked. He talked to them, but in the end, he said, "Don't don't go anywhere. I've given you power. I've given you all of this. Like you you are made a new creation. You you are a new creature in me." 
um, but don't do don't do anything unless, and wait for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Wait for the Holy Spirit, and you can see the transformation. You can see how they were able to sustain mm-hmm. what they had received mm-hmm. uh, after the Holy Spirit came. Yeah. So, like you were saying, what really matters is that you know that you have a helper. You have the Holy Spirit. Like your sins were already forgiven. Like sin is not. I don't want to say sin is not a problem. <laughs> sin is it, it's a very <laughs> it's a serious thing. <laughs> but more like sin has been for if you like you say if you really want to if you really want change if you really want transformation if you really want deliverance if you really want healing you're intentional and you've got into that place where you're broken before God. Like those things, God just wants to take them. Like he, he died for it yeah. there a thousand and thousand years ago. He went to the cross and said, it is finished. Mm-hmm. And so there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's understanding that you have a helper and calling on to him because the Bible says, call on to me and I'll help you. If you're intentional and you call on God, he will give you that power to will and to do his good pleasure. So the difference between the, the, the worldly stuff where you, you will and you do and you, you have the power, like your mindset and all that, um, the difference between that and the things of the spirit is that you cannot really just will it in your own in your own power. Mm. Like the thing like you don't even know what that is anyway. <laughs> but you <laughs> never know. Yeah. It's a mystery. So that's why you can't um, you can't lean on yourself, on your power, on your willpower, mm-hmm. but you lean on the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You lean on, on the knowledge of, of God. You lean on, those are the things that you hold on to, the faith knowing that God is faithful, mm-hmm. that, that God is good, that God will, whatever he say he will do, that God has forgiven you. You lean on mercy, you lean on grace. Like Those are the things when it comes to your growth and your transformation in, 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 the, in, in, in God, is those are the things you lean on to, not necessarily because I want to, but no, I guess I want to. That's important. But to, to the, I think the cherry, I guess I'll say on top of the cake is the Holy Spirit helps me to will to, to do this. Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is very powerful and very, very packed. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> me too. Thank you for having me over. I'm oh, having fun with me. <laughs> Well, um, wow. So, uh, we're gonna bring it to a close because you know, you know, we keep going. So I'm definitely, I'm so grateful for all you shared. I know, like, if anything, it's actually just reinforced. Like, you know, when you said going back to the Holy Spirit whenever you're feeling any kind of because I have a tendency to do other things first. You know, I like to eat and watch my shows, and then it's like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. Yeah. And you know, so like always like you save yourself so much time when you just turn to him first. Mm-hmm. You know, so um on that note, just to like summarize, like God really is the principal thing. That get in the word, you know, read your word, get to know him, ask him to reveal himself to you. Mm-hmm. One thing I'm learning is that we ask with an honest heart, like he always comes through. He will always come through, even if it's if it's not, you know, because I think that's how you want the spiritual experiences, mm-hmm. you know. He will always come through. Sometimes he will come through through a friend. Sometimes you will randomly see that YouTube video. Yeah. Sometimes, like, it's like... It's mostly actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> not that's 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 like YouTube, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're going to see he will always always come through like God cares about you so much you're so precious and um, as we call that I would love for Pris- that was a Pris- <laughs> Pris- <laughs> <laughs> so pray for us and close us out okay um, Father we thank you for speaking to us today oh God we thank you for your goodness your love that you love us beyond our shortcomings, you love us beyond our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Father, you love us beyond our sin, oh God. You gave your, Christ, your son, Christ Jesus, to die for us. And we just want to receive um, your forgiveness even right now. We want to f- receive your mercy, Lord, for it is made new every day. We want to receive it so that there's no condemnation. Your word says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. 
So, Father, we silence every tongue of condemnation. We silence every tongue of judgment because we know that you are our Savior and you've given us salvation. You made us new creatures. So the old is passed away. So, Father, as we go forward, may you help us to stand strong. May you help us, O Holy Spirit. We're calling on you even right now to be our helper. We're calling you to help us to think like you think, to help us to love like you love, to help us to move like you move, to help us, O Holy Spirit. We're bringing ourselves to your feet to say that you are God and we are nothing. We're mere human beings and we need you, Holy Spirit. So, Father God, today from this topic, oh God, where we be, we understand that we've been made new, but we also understand that we are only made new if you help us, mm -hmm. if you help us to fulfill that promise that you've made onto us. So, Father, we just rely on you. We rely on your on your knowledge. We rely on your wisdom. We rely on your Holy Spirit. And we just thank you. We glorify you. And every single person that's watching today, oh, Father, we pray that you do something new in their lives, that you will redeem and restore, oh, God, that you will silence every lie of the enemy by your truth, oh, God, that your truth will t transcend, that you so love them that you gave your only son, your only better son, to die for them. So we receive it. We, uh, we rejoice in it. And we'll follow God, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for, for joining me, for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, uh, when I close this out, thank you. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and see you in the next video. Bye. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Till next time.